My name is uh, Dr. Tresseter and uh, my education is in chemistries, dentistry and medicine. I'm going to tell you a story of how I got involved uh, in protest to the oil and gas, even though I must preface that I'm not against the oil companies. Um, I've won many shares in oil companies and uh, it's just uh, their new high, high pressure hydraulic fracturing. In the last two years, we've probably got 80 wells that came in within five kilometers of my house. Um, they were flaring. We had no notice of them coming in. Uh, they didn't tell us what it was about, what was going on. Uh, they just picked up and started, and uh, they're supposed to flare for 72 hours, according to regulations. Uh, they were flaring for 18 months. I noticed a chronic cough started, so my cough lasted about 18 months. So I became concerned with what was happening, and at first I didn't know what was causing it. Uh, and then we started to look into the actual process of high, high pressure hydraulic fracturing on a horizontal level. Um, so a group of us started to educate ourselves and we spent three years basically learning all about the process. They were using between probably two to five million gallons of potable water, not just water, but potable water, uh, to do a frack. They were taking water from the Cochrane water system. The difficulty was that they were putting between, oh, probably 20 to 40,000 gallons of chemicals down the well underneath our aquifers um, with each frack. Now, of course, all this water that's now chemically poisoned doesn't return. It can't, you can't purify that water. It's gone forever. Uh, we found out that some companies were taking it down to the local small town uh, water treatment plants and saying this is just water residue from the thing and of course, the treatment plants weren't able to treat the chemicals that were in the, the backflow. So we fought very hard because when we asked what were the chemicals put down, they wouldn't tell us. They said it was proprietary. So without knowing the chemicals, of course, we didn't know what we were testing for to what was making us sick. Anyways, we pushed and pushed and we finally got them to reveal the chemicals. We still got a problem because some of them use trade names and they won't reveal it. Uh, but we're getting somewhere. But the worst part was that they were flaring these chemicals. Now, they will tell you if you ask them that they use incinerators. Well, that's not true. They use flare shields. Incinerators are brick lined, 30 to 40 feet high, and they have usually a scrubber on the top that takes out what they can't burn. Flare shields were to hide the height of the flame from the competition. And that's all they were meant to do, just hide the flame. So this is what's dangerous. When I asked the engineers who work for the ARCB or the oil companies, name me one or two gases that are coming out as a result of the chemical composition, coming out of those flare shields. I haven't been able to get one answer of even one chemical gas that's coming out of there. They don't want to know because they don't want to be shut down. They want to get as many wells done before the public finds out how dangerous this is. So that's the immediate problem is the flaring and the gases that are spewing out. That's why I got a chronic cough. Now, during the first year that they were doing that, when I had this chronic cough, I went to Arizona for a month. After one week of being there, my cough cleared up and never came back. After the end of the month, I came home. Within three days, my chronic cough started up again. I mean, this was irritating. It was constant. Again, this year, we all got so sick, we had to leave. So we went to Arizona for the winter. Again, my cough cleared up again, went away. I, I was having problems thinking, remembering names. I couldn't focus. Um, I was weak. I uh, had heavy, heavy sputum. Um, I was having hair fall out in greater quantities than normal. 
many women in this area had patches of their hair just coming out in groups, in large groups. And when you see them, it's quite scary, actually, and it was pretty drastic for the women. Um, we had uh, many more incidences of cancer occurring in our area. We had bloated stomachs of, of people uh, that went to the hospital, but they didn't know why. Um, we had uh, one of my neighbors came in one day and he, he passed one of the flare shields that is just really close to the highway, just down the road. And he has had his car window open and unfortunately it's the level of the road and only about 50 yards off the road. He got instantly sick. He felt a pain in his chest. Five days later he started, he came over and showed me he had these huge boils, blister boils on his forehead that were oozing stuff that came out of his forehead. About three weeks later he came over and he showed me this body rash. It looked like a burn rash. It was kind of all run together and kind of moist and it was just horrifying. So I took pictures. It was over his whole body. And of course we complained to the ERCB, oh don't worry it's not caused from that. And so we got some major problems with this new hydraulic fracturing that they didn't have in the old fracturing methods that they had. We have uh, contamination and uh, communication problems where they'll drill a well over here and an old abandoned well over here will connect. And that all that frac fluid and the poisons and stuff come out on fields. And that's just happened up here in Innisfil. We have natural vertical fissures. If the ones they create by all this pressure meet up with a natural fissure, it goes vertical and it hits the aquifer, that's it. Our properties are all worth zero. Um, they're putting this amount of pressure in the ground and it takes eons for it to all come out. In the meantime, it causes these rocks to shift and form and we're feeling here in this area tremors and earthquakes. So now what do you tell me about the integrity of the cement seal around that pipe? It's pretty scary. If we contaminate the aquifer around here, Cochrane will be a ghost town. You know, they'll say, oh, we're doing our best, and, you know, I've heard all the stories. I've, I've been in contact with the ERCB, I've talked to the directors of, of CAP, that's the, the big boys in the oil industry, and they plead ignorance, and that's a huge problem. We know way more than they know. And they don't want to know. And why? Because we're talking billions and billions of dollars of, of government income. The regulating system, funded by the oil company, is a huge conflict of interest. How are we supposed to get help for health problems and things like that? We've got to do something about it. You know, what I'm finding, and Canadians are really lethargic. They sit around, I tell them this story, and they say, well, you know... I think everything's okay because the oil and gas industry says okay. And because it's not in their backyard yet, and because it doesn't affect their water yet, they're not concerned. But who should we be concerned for? I'm concerned for the children of the CEOs of oil companies. I'm concerned about the health of the rig workers who they hide. If you report to a hospital with a problem from a rig, they will fire you. So. There's a, there's a huge cover-up here. A lot of the water problems that wells have already had, now they'll tell you that there's no, we haven't had a, a reported well problem yet with fracking. What they don't tell you is that the people who had the problem were bought off and, and made to sign a non-disclosure agreement. Now we know lots of those people who signed the agreements and they've told us this. They won't, we can't reveal their name, obviously, because they would be liable. But anyways, it, it's a horrendous problem. Um, many countries have banned it because it's so dangerous. Why are they allowing it here in Canada? We are now in a dangerous situation where government is telling everybody to hush-hush and keeping all this information 
quiet when it's already readily available from the United States. So am I excited? Yes, I'm excited. Um, I didn't, you know, I'm not a protester. I'm just an average guy trying to, you know, live a normal life. And I'm concerned and I'm taking up this vendetta because it's not moral. It, it's, it's immoral what they're doing. It's blatant greed is what's driving the oil industry and the government. And nobody is looking out for you. Nobody. So be aware. Be Ask questions of your MLA. Ask, talk to people who know about fracking. Like our group is called Cause. And uh, you can look us up on the internet. I hope that what I've told you here can be useful to you and... and don't sit around and wait till it comes in your next door. Don't be a pacifistic Canadian. <laughs> Step up and make a sound. You know, this what they're doing here is terrible. It's not it's not a small thing. It's huge and it could get so much worse. Anyways, thanks for listening.